we've just finished in hiking in Pingxi and uh, we're gonna get some food and there's no better place to get food around this area than uh, this little town it's called Shengkang and um, it's in Taipei County and uh, it's famous for one thing which is Hugo's favorite food it's, fa tofu. it's famous for cho tofu or stinky tofu so we're gonna go and check out some stinky tofu and Hugo's probably gonna just have some plain rice and uh, yeah we'll see what happens we're heading towards uh, Shengkang Laojie or Old Street most towns in Taiwan have an old street area which is kind of like a day market or sometimes a night market and you can get all kinds of great food there this huge tree in front is the beginning of the Shengkang Laojie it's Thursday lunchtime so it's not really very busy but if you come down here at the weekend it's absolutely rammed and you can't even move so this one is barbecued chou dofu and in this town is made of tofu this is preserved tofu dogan is takeaway do-it-yourself stinky tofu like this is the emptiest i've ever seen this place it's a nice little town but you meet all kinds of weirdos here look at this guy here <laughs> every town in Thai, taiwan has one of these temples they always got such um, an elaborate design on the roof. They're pretty cool. Some kind of uh, brown sugar cakes, flat cakes, a grass jelly drink. It's very good in the hot weather apparently. And then there's a whole bunch of different kind of traditional Taiwanese cakes that I really like to eat. Hey. 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 Hugo's had a lion's head which is basically pork balls and then not the, not the pig's balls not the actual balls of the pig but it's minced pork rolled into a ball and cooked to it stewed with white cat with Chinese cabbage and then I have gone for the stinky tofu, the steamed stinky tofu. Nice. A steaming pile of tofu. A steaming pile of stinky tofu. All right. Steamed tofu is here. And uh, the smell is amazing. Wouldn't you agree? It's wonderful. It's just a wonderful aroma. It really is nice. <laughs> Hugo's got his um, lion's head. There's one of, uh, that's what it is. It's like a pork ball. Are you happy? Delicious. Mm. He's lived in Taiwan for 10 years and at least he's learned one thing. He can use chopsticks. <laughs> we just finished lunch. That was good. Yeah, totally full now. Hey, la bai yang, where am I? You go. Hey, you go. So far, la. Okay, we're done in Shengkang. Heading back to the car now, and then hopefully we're gonna do another hike this afternoon. Depending on how our ancient, aging legs feel. I'm here at uh, the entrance to Huang Di Dian, which is like the Empress seat. Um, it's basically a large triangular walk, as you can see by that red line in the background there. You go up one side, then across this ridge, sandstone ridges at the top, with some really nice views up there, and then back down the other side to the car park. Now, I'm having to do this one solo because Hugo left his hiking poles at the last trail so he's having to drive back to pick them up so I'm gonna just blast through this hike and hopefully by the time he gets back I'll be uh, waiting for him 
Hmm. There's a giant bird here on the path. I have no idea what kind of bird that is. Oh, it's kind of a heron. There's a couple of Formosa macaques over there, but I can't get them on screen very well, I'm afraid. I can see them. They're a bit camera shy. They've got very pink faces compared to the ones in Singapore. Well, that was a nice surprise. I wasn't really expecting to see anything on this walk. So, uh, bonus. Now, the first half an hour or so of this walk is really quite relentless. It's just steep steps, never ending. You can see the beginning of the sandstone ridges here. Now, when I get up to the top, I'll be standing up the top of that, looking down. Oh, I'm really struggling now. The terrain has changed to old moss-covered steps, which are a bit slippy. Now we've gone completely off-road. About halfway up, if we look out now, that's a sandstone ridge that we were just looking up at. And then there's a lovely view over the rolling hills of Taipei County, or New Taipei City as it's now called. We made it up to the top of the ridge probably in about half an hour. Uh, it's pretty tough work in this heat and I'm sweating as you can see the sweat is dripping off my hat um, now the the west peak is about 200 meters that way and then the east peak is uh, in the opposite direction uh, I'm gonna go and have a quick look at the west peak see if there's anything interesting and then we'll make our way across the top of the ridge to the east peak before descending. I'm not a big fan of walking through all this overgrown grass because you never know what could be waiting along the side of the path for you. Those long slithery things. Check that out, what a lovely view. Whew. Well worth the climb and the buckets of sweat. Uh, I've just been to the West Peak and now uh, I gotta head up there and along the ridge to the East Peak. There's a couple of stainless steel ladders installed on the way to the West Peak and seriously, if the person who installed them had ever have to climb them, they obviously never climbed them because they're so annoying to climb because the rungs press against the wall and your foot slips off the rung and um, I'd much prefer just to rope and some steps carved into the wall. But uh, that's progress. So we're on the ridge, heading in that direction. It doesn't look very promising. So I'm gonna give it another five minutes and uh, see what happens. Now, 15 years ago, or the last time I came here anyway, there was none of these metal poles so this hike wasn't really for the faint-hearted 
as you can see there's kind of a kind of a kind of a big drop down there so when you got to the sharpest pieces of the, of the ridge the sharpest parts of the ridge people would actually sit down and inch across them on their backsides i think a few years ago somebody actually slipped and fell to their death so the government has to be seen to be doing something to protect the people and uh, so it's completely understandable why they did it but obviously it makes for a, a less exciting experience on the hike the storm is getting closer and uh, I think it looks like it's raining over there and my destination is there and so I figure by the time I get over there it's going to be raining and being caught on this kind of ridge when it's wet is uh, not going to be fun so I'm going to turn back and uh, head back down the way I came just to be safe. I might throw the drone on for five minutes as well. So I'm heading back down to the car now. Didn't make it to the East Peak, which is a little bit disappointing, but um, you can't be too careful on a trail like that, which is along a mountain ridge, because you're really exposed. I probably could have made it, but you just don't want to take a chance, because if you get stuck up there, then you're buggered, basically. I believe there was a mountain spring there so I can have a nice wash because I am absolutely drenched. Uh, uh, hear the thunder. Maybe I did make the right call. Excuse the dad bod. I just had to stay on top of it, it was so sweaty. Um, we finished the hike. We didn't make the main objective, the East Peak, but um, we did enough. It was satisfactory. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And um, don't forget, if you want some more content, check out the Hyclopedia channel. And most importantly, please don't forget to get the bell on. See ya.